Well, hello, everybody. So excited to see so many in the chat already, but very excited to have Sophie here, Sophie here today. Uh, her and I have not had a chat in longer than I think I'd like to think about. So, I don't know. <laughs> uh, so it's we've been catching up on some things and uh, kind of can't wait to talk pollinators today. Yes. The so um. Oh, sorry, I hit that inaccurate. But we'll say hello to Mel anyway. Uh, and hi, Robin. Uh, Robin from Chicago. Mags. Joe, always good to see you here. Uh, mm -hmm. A lot of chef is here. Leanne, Anna, Rob, good to see you. Uh, Pete at the Triangle. I like that name. <laughs> Manchantress. Uh, Garden of Whedon, which I believe is Pammy. Hello. Oh, Pam. Yeah. Oh, so good to see you all. And Locke, always good to have you here. Oh, yes. And Lisa, Gypsy, Carol, listen. Okay, yes. I'm just going to call you Lisa. How's that? <laughs> so anyway, so excited to have you all here. And... Sophie and I are, so, I keep calling you Sophie. I'm so sorry. Oh, that's all right. That's Sophie all right. and I are going to be talking about one of our favorite, personal favorite topics, and that's pollinators. Yes. And how to attract them to our gardens and maybe how to keep them there. Mm -hmm. So how to house them while they're visiting, right? <laughs> so I thought we might, um, we might start with the housing portion. Because mm -hmm. we'll get carried away once we start talking about flowers. Oh, that'll be it. <laughs> and we won't get back to housing uh, our pollinators. So uh, is there anything specific that you like to do for them? Or do you just let them do their thing? So I'm in sort of two minds about this. I have delved into the bug hotels and the um, sort of like the pre, the ones that you can buy at like a local shop mm -hmm. and the ones you can build on your own. And I'm in two minds about them. No one, have, they don't use them, the ones that I've had. But okay. I've seen other people have had great success. And then half the time I think, how do they know it's for them? So I'm in two minds. Like, I can, okay. the pre-brought ones, they look fabulous and I want to use them. But I don't know if they know that they're meant to use them. Okay. How about you? What do you, what do you use? Well, we are building a, a bug bin oh, this okay. year. So uh, Steve in the from Green Side Up did one about three years ago. And actually that plaque behind me mm. is from his bug bin. Oh, brilliant. Uh, so we're um, we're reconstructing Parliament and Big Ben <laughs> yes. and making it into a bug condo hotel thing. Oh, say brilliant. Uh, it's going to be huge because my husband is in charge of building it. And uh, <laughs> I think it's going to be like six feet tall. Stop it. I know. I'm like, honey, it doesn't have to be the actual size of Parliament. It's going, no, no, but it must. <laughs> it, yes, must. But it has to be the right dimensions. Oh, brilliant. And I'm like, did you not see? I, I had him watch the, the video that Steve built it. Mm -hmm. He was not worrying about dimensions. Okay. He was just throwing together pallets and making this uh, bug <laughs> hotel. So apparently ours is going to be um, in proportion to Parliament and wow. Big Ben. That's brilliant. So uh, anyway, that's the plans are drawn. And mm -hmm. so hopefully this weekend that will start. Well, I'm going to put that in a place in the garden and then just put wildflowers around it. Oh, if I have any brassicas that I don't really have room for, I'm going to plant them there and let them go to seed. So I'm going to try to just make an environment that they're like, Love it. This for us. It'll be like a little lost forest. Yes. Oh, that'd be so good. What? Well, so, and I've not actually seen um, the bug Ben from when Steve did it. So, what kind of insects will it attract? I think it will attract. I mean, there's little places for bees, like single, oh, single solitary. dwellers. Yeah. Uh, I think it will attract. Well, I don't think it'll attract slugs, but maybe underneath the. Maybe the, but maybe the leopard slug, we want to attract Ooh. that one, right? Yes. Uh, I'm sure butterflies will fly around all those the beautiful wildflowers. Yep. Now, whether they will live there or not, 
different story. I think they, I don't know where they live, actually, now that mm. I'm saying this. This is what I struggle with, is the butterflies, because I got really quite into butterflies last year. I did the whole, was it the big butterfly, well, in the UK, we do a big butterfly watch, and I guess it's like a easier way to help keep an eye on the population numbers. Do they right. do you have something similar? Well, a little bit, because we have a monarch, a monarch butterfly um, decline here, really big. Mm -hmm. Well, there are places you can, because I, my butterfly bush covered with yeah. monarchs oh, wow, yeah. all summer. So I just love it. Yeah. Uh, so I think we can report like we have, I've seen six today. Yes, that's whatever. it. Yes. Yeah, that's it. So they've got, last year they did an app and you just literally, they asked you to sit outside for 15 minutes and just sort of um, mark down all the different butterflies you see and how many within a 15 minute time slot. And then you just do your little app and you report it. So okay. I did that last year. So I got into that. And then obviously from doing that, I was going, I was looking for all the native species I have for my area and how to attract right. them. So each different variant of butterfly usually has like a specific plant they like. Um, right. I think overall it is milkweed. Um, yes. but, but for like rarer ones, I think you need to like dive into their absolute favorite food. And there's not, there's, there's no guarantee you'll get it. Um, but I was looking into all of that last year and sort of thinking, oh, how do I get these butterflies? I've seen a really nice purple one. I'd love to see that in real life. <laughs> and yeah. So. Well, I think like dill and fennel. Dill, yeah. Are I know that the monarchs like to uh, lay their eggs on dill. Mm -hmm. So I think I'll, you know, that's a good reminder. I need to plant some of that by the bug hotel. Yes. Yeah, so maybe it that way. they, you know, at least it keeps them safe and I don't have to pick them off. Mm -hmm. the dill that I'd like to eat. Yeah. <laughs> Keep them I in one contained area. Do that, particularly if it's like a monarch. Yeah. Caterpillar. Be I'm not I'm not taking it off. I'm like, please. Stay you as know. long as you need. Yes. Like <laughs> yes, this now becomes your plant. I um uh, but yeah I'd love to uh sorry I'm reading. I, I need to not do that while I'm talking. Uh so no I'm very excited about thinking of ways plants Mm -hmm. other things that are just gonna make them um want to be coming. here yeah yeah Do you remember that video i sent i think i've put it in the potty mouth discord and i've definitely sent it in our chat but last year there was a plant we were trying to identify to see what it was and it had all the butterflies like at least 10 plus butterflies just sat on it um i think we narrowed it down to either oregano or wild majorum i think that's how you say it majorum. okay yeah um but they went crazy for it um, they were in flower to, at the time. Yeah, they're like a weird purpley flower. I have to resend it again. Well, oregano definitely has a w weird purpley flower. Yeah, it, I think it's very similar to majorum as well. That's why we were kind of like, we don't know which one it is. Um, but it's so worth it maybe just throwing in some both of uh, those maybe. seeds yeah. around this bug bed and go and have at it. Yeah, and I think they yeah. really loved it. So God knows what it was, but I'm trying both of them this year, and I'm just gonna let them go and see what happens. I think that's, I think that's a great idea. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think the so more, beautiful. and I also want to put a water source out there. <gasps> yes. Just a little, cause I know they have to drink something occasionally. Mm -hmm. Correct. Uh, even bees and butterflies, I think. Yeah. The um, little bees. So, yeah. Yeah. So I just want to put like a dish on the ground filled with rocks and just kind of keep some water uh, available. So they have somewhere to drink. Absolutely. I've because seen on um, Etsy, again, this is probably me just with a bad spending habit, um, but they do like these teeny tiny little bee cups. Have you seen them? They're like, like really long sticks so you can put them amongst your flowers and there's just like these teeny tiny cups where they can come and sit and drink. And I'm like, oh, so okay, cute. now you just, you're going to send me to Etsy now. <laughs> Go to Etsy. <laughs> yeah. I'm, so, I'm so bad when I think, oh my gosh, that'd be so much nicer for them. They right? probably don't care. <laughs> But then the, all the good. they'd also catch the rainwater. Mm, so, that's it. Yeah. But you know, I was so impressed, um, or not impressed with monarchs mm -hmm. because they do a whole migration to Mexico mm. and then come back up here. Really? And it's like oh, generations of butterflies to do that migration. And they just and know. I, I know. It's weird, isn't and it? And there's there's just a part. How do they know? where to go <laughs> they do it every year and i'm always so impressed with them and they're so beautiful mm -hmm. um oh i love this idea of the little bee cups 
Oh, honestly, definitely look them up. I think you'll end up buying some. I really do. <laughs> oh, I'm, I am I already know. I'm like, okay, what's my credit <laughs> card? Okay. Uh, yeah, that sounds wonderful. Uh, oh, Mags is saying, how about a solar powered water feature? Well, you know, I'm, I'm thinking about, I have a bird bath and I'm actually mm -hmm. thinking about moving it because the squirrels use it more than the birds. And of course they do. <laughs> if you've seen me at all, you know that, um, all present company accepted. I am not a squirrel fan. And uh, so I was thinking, I want to just move that and put one of my green stalks mm -hmm. up in its place. Uh, so I wonder if, because it has a solar powered fountain. Mm -hmm. um, so I could move that back to the the bug area. Man, I'm like wanting to move into the bug area now. You should maybe put a seating area near it. Oh, will that be too... Don't want them to land on me. Well, I bring my own something. seat with me. Okay. So if oh, I'm of just course, there, yeah. So if I'm just there, I can just park <laughs> and go, hey, look at these guys. I'm just going to sit here and watch. Yeah, I'm just going to sit here, and, like, which I would do. Yeah, absolutely. Particularly if everything's flowering mm. and there's just a like an activity that's, ooh, I'm Maybe getting very excited now. about this. <laughs> yes. Get rid of this rain. Bring me sun. Well, Lack is saying his migration stays in New Zealand. Well, Mexico is a little far for them to fly from New Zealand. <laughs> uh, no, but that's that's interesting because you pro must have enough climate difference mm -hmm. for them to do that. That's awesome. See, I'm not sure what I was do if I'm honest. Um, I'm still quite new to it, but I know um, I don't think we have a problem in terms of the monarch not being complete in population. I'm not sure. I have to find out. I just think everything is affecting everything. Mm -hmm. So every little shift that's happening with our weather is affecting yeah. everything Every, that yeah, counts absolutely. on weather, right? So I just think it all, it all comes together at some point. Mm -hmm. um, so I think um, that's good. Anybody in the, uh, oh, here, Locke says we plant, let me pull it up so everybody can read it. We plant... The swan plant, mm -hmm. if you yeah. want. I don't know that I'm familiar with the swan plant. Sounds beautiful. Either. It does. The swan, I'm trying to think. Uh, Not the have... bird of paradise. No. <laughs> See, I, could, I couldn't grow that outdoors here. Mm -mm. That would Not be hot. like, nope. Uh, nope. Sorry, indoor plant. I will, um, I'm going to Google that after we're done. I always take all of, all of these ideas. Hmm. And uh, I go back and read everything in case I'm. So I've just looked up the swamp plant and it is terribly quite similar to your hairy bulls plant. Yeah, <laughs> so it's like a milkweed. Kind of, yeah. Hairy bulls is a milkweed. Oh, well, that make a lot of sense. I wonder if it's the same. The same I one wonder then. if it is. Oh, we'll have to find out the actual. Because I don't Latin think it looks name. like a swan. I really think it looks more like a hairy ball. <laughs> I think it's because then the neck of where the stalk comes out and then the bulbous bit kind of looks like the wings. Um, okay. I'll, I'll, I will Google that later. Yeah. I think it's very interesting. Uh, oh, that's funny. <laughs> yeah. No, milkweed is a great um, butterfly track. So I have yellow mm -hmm. milkweed going or starting and I have an orange milkweed. Oh, lovely. Yeah, so th those might end up by bug bend too. Yeah, yeah. So we kind of can overplant back there because it's. Yeah. I've never sown wildflowers. I haven't either. No. I just but... always I, I'll see them, but I have two packets of wildflowers, and I thought, I'm just gonna go crazy back there, and, you know, let them let them figure out who lives and dies right like well, that's it i feel like you don't have to be as fussy with them you can sort of right. just i'm just let them do their thing them and yeah. let them go that's it yeah um yeah so anybody else doing mm -hmm. anything interesting to attract pollinators this year or no no house them we're still talking about housing mm -hmm. or butterflies um, see. someone said they had a one of those cutting bees Oh, it's gonna be a few comments away now. Oh, See. Joe is saying he he swallowtails are sunny. I get, I don't mm. want to say this like I'm bragging, but I get black swallowtails <gasps> and the yellow swallowtails, and they are 
They are so beautiful. And their caterpillars are beautiful. Yeah. Like, but they're the way they fly and the, their wings. Oh my goodness. Are they the ones where they again, excuse me, because I don't know the correct um atomy of atomy um of a butterfly, but is that where it's got the really long yes like tail almost on their wings? The yeah. Yes. Oh, okay. And they do kind of look like a swallowtail then. So yeah. I think that's <gasps> um, yeah. See, I've seen something like that, but in the version of a moth, and I don't think I think you get it in the US, but we don't get it here. It's like a bright green one. Um, with a really long sort of like tail bit. Okay. For life of me, I can't remember what it's called, but I really wanted them. I think it's a lunar moth, actually. A lunar okay. moth, and it's beautiful, really beautiful. I really wanted them to be over here, but everything I Googled was like, no, only in the US. <laughs> yeah, see, like, no. here's what I don't want is for the white cabbage butterfly mm -hmm. to feel like this is for them. Yeah, and they dominate, don't they? They really do dominate. Oh. Yeah. I've already seen one. <laughs> yeah. Our yeah. weather is still freezing, and I've already seen one. So oh, relentless, absolutely relentless. Oh, Dusty Flats is mm. working on lupines this mm. year for the tiny azure butterfly. Is that okay? Let's one? talk about loop lupins and mm. lupines. And, and I was corrected on my last show that it's lupins, not lupines. Well, here we put an e on the end of it, so here mm -hmm. it really is like. A lupine, and really? you guys now put an E or UK, really? and maybe the rest of the world doesn't. So it's lupins, and that's I think what caused my confusion. confusion. So anyway, would, I do have some yeah. growing, which I've never started them before, and they have the beautiful classic leaf, mm -hmm. but they're really tiny. Oh yeah, I mean yeah. it is. I'm just about over the moon for that. I'm like, oh, look at all Finally. those little, yeah. I mean, it looks like a fern or like a, an exotic leaf. They're weird, so aren't pretty. they? They're and another slow grower, aren't they? They kind of take a while to get started. Then when they do, they kind of just go. I, you're, you're, I have no idea. The first year yeah. I grew them, they did better than my snapdragons. Um, have oh, done. really? <laughs> yeah. So I'm, uh, I put some out for winter sewing because we're still pulling in mm -hmm. pretty cold weather but then robin from uh robin gardens said just direct sew some and see like okay. she's had great luck with that so i thought i'm going to take a bit of my one of my raised beds and just sew them and then i imagine can move them yeah if i'd like to but i thought i want some i want some snapdragons that i actually grew <laughs> i always buy them they're oh, hard though. Well, JB doesn't seem to be having an issue with it. Or Jess, oh, sorry, Je Jess, J Jess must have JB's the golden Jess. touch because yeah. hers are beautiful, amazing, amazing, beautiful. Yeah. I, I don't, I've never seen them that big. They're so, so they're really hard to grow, honestly. Um, yeah, I I struggle. I've only did a couple last year, and I've got I've got my a few here. Um, when did I sew these? Oh no, these... those look those look like plants. These oh. are on the 18th of Feb, so they're a little bit slower maybe than what they should have done, but they're only just starting to get their well, sort of... Well, they look better than mine did. Two leaves. Yeah, yeah but then... I did mine in January, and they I mean, were it's... still these little stunted... Mm -hmm. It's so... really potluck. These have been outside. I think they do better outside. If you keep them inside for too long, I don't know what happens. They go a bit weird, but as soon as you sort of like germinate and you put them outside, they seem to do better. Um Okay. But mine, mine didn't come up in the winter sewing, though. So I really don't know. It's hard. Well, one. we're going to see because I, yeah. I threw a jug out there uh, <laughs> a week ago. And, but I'm also, I just ordered some more because I keep going through all my packs. Um, oh, so easily done. How oh, many seeds do you get? I get like, they give you like 20 seeds and the seeds are so small. <laughs> oh, I think, well, you know, now that you say that, I think it comes with a, a, a sleeve of leaves inside the envelope oh, really? so, um but yeah not too many yeah they're uh, very sparse when you buy them yeah which i don't get because i think it was jesse uh from potty mouth said mm -hmm. she just pulls the flowers off and like throws them everywhere oh, and yeah. she just gets <laughs> snapdragons yeah. growing so well, I thought, the actual seed being... pods give you loads so many seed in that one yeah. little pod you probably have enough to last you a good couple of years, depending on how many you're growing. Well, I, I wonder if I've just been too precious with them. 
Like mm. maybe they're they just like a little more abuse. I think so. You know, they don't need to be coddled quite as yeah. much. As... I think that's that's the the results I'm getting is if I leave them, they do better than me constantly hovering over them and trying to do stuff. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I think that might be the key to be fair. <laughs> yeah. So I'm I'm gonna try to just um let them go. Mm -hmm. Now what Robin was saying, yep, direct so on the surface, they can be moved. Snaps mm -hmm. take a minute. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, and I've seen that, that they, mine, mine germinated very quickly, but then did nothing. Yeah. So they do sit there for a bit. Yeah. And my, uh, I don't want to say the word peppers on this plant in this show, but I'm going to. <laughs> Chili, uh, chilies, peppers. <laughs> yes. And we call everything over here peppers. Oh, hot I did peppers say, to be fair. Or, or mild peppers or sweet peppers. Yeah. So when I say peppers, I mean the whole lot. All of them. But they're, I'm wondering if I've got them under too much light this year. But really? they've always grown for me under these lights. Yeah. Because they're not doing much. And they look like they're yellowing. It's when they just, just stunted. So weird. Oh, that is yeah. weird. Yeah. So I'm thinking maybe I should take them out from under the light. And let them... Can they get too much light? Is that, is that such a thing? I don't know. I well, thought I, I think, loved it. I think JB was talking about uh, lessening the light. Because he can control mm. the intensity. I can't do that on ah, my okay. it's like. It's like all or nothing. Yeah. Uh, but he's having such a good year. He can, <sighs> I mean, Tammy. he could throw really his jammy. seed out his car window and it would grow. So <laughs> this exactly like, he has some, he's got something's going on with him this year. He's got like the golden touch. He's on the ball. That's what it is. He's so organized. <laughs> yes. And he has all this growing space now, I think. Okay. He's coming along. Mm -hmm. Oh, Dusty Flats has the Orange Wonder Snapdragons. Beautiful. Okay, that's the one I'm trying to grow. I've been trying to grow <laughs> yeah, because they're so beautiful. They're orange and hot pink with oh. like a, a yellow center. Maybe they're not I, what I thought then, because we uh, we don't have those ones. But the closest one I think I've got to that is the Potomac dark orange. Yes, is that the I, same? Do you reckon that's the same? There's no pink in that one. I don't think. No, but the pink sounds amazing. Oh, it's so beautiful. Oh. Uh, that's why I'm like, I want to grow these. <laughs> you can't find those in a garden center. No, no. You know, you can you find the red the and the white and the yellow and, and I want to, I want to add a little wonder. color. Yes, they are. They're very similar to the Potomac dark orange ones. Okay. Oh, they're, oh, they're so nice. If I could also get some of those this year, I'd be very happy. <laughs> yeah, no, I'd love those. So why don't we uh, move? So we agree that mm -hmm. our bugs... They need a place to live. Mm -hmm. We can get them a place to live or just some, it's more of a, I think they like more of a mess than yes. we like to keep our gardens. Yeah. You know, the goal is to always keep it tidy. And I think. And they don't, they don't like They that. like more, more like the scrappy areas because oh, they'll, yeah. they'll be left alone and maybe a little water source mm -hmm. and obviously some pollen mm -hmm. and some uh, herbs or plants that they love to lay their beautiful little caterpillars on so we can yeah. get more. And then also knowing if the different plants attract different pollinators. Right. And that just takes a little, do. that takes a little research. Yeah. But, you know, thank God for Google. <laughs> God and, Google yes. Uh, and yeah, you can look that up in a couple <laughs> of different places. I always try to confirm things when I read them on Google. Yeah. So I'm like, really? I do really? as well, especially with the AI and stuff. I feel like yeah, a lot I'm of like, stuff this is, is a not bit gospel truth. This is mm -hmm. Google, all right? So, uh, yeah. So let's talk about some flowers. Yes. Which um, I'm so excited about really up in the flower game this year. Same. Uh, so what are you growing that you're really excited about? Probably at the moment, my dahlias, because they're the things that are taking up most of my time. Um, I am, for example, I've got, I mean, I've got several windowsills full of my dahlia tubers at the moment. So it kind of just looks like this. Again, I'm not sure if you'll see. Um, nice. I mean, I've got a way of putting four in this tray just because they're teeny tiny tubers. But what I'll be doing is just letting them grow on like that. And then once they get to a big enough size, I'll just cut them. And then I pop them up and they, I mean, this one bad example, cause I'm going to pinch this out soon. 
Okay. Um, and then the thing that I pinch out, I'll probably just put some root and hormone and then pop that one up. And it just it keeps going and going. So I'm going to be absolutely full of dailies by the end of it. But um, yeah, it's just fun. It's such a fun process and you get so many colours and they look great in floor arrangement. So that's probably the thing I'm most excited about this now, year. Now, do is... you dig them up every year? <sighs> I did last year. Okay. I wouldn't do it again. It was a really long, laborious task. And then pretty much most of the tubers that I tried to store over winter didn't really make it. Or they weren't of a quality, which I think I'd be getting as good cuttings as I'm getting for my fresh tubers. Right. So I really don't know what I'm going to do this year, whether I'm just going to leave them in the ground and heavily mulch fleece. I don't know. Or just be like, I'll buy more tubers next year. <laughs> don't know. Seems a bit wasteful, but... I really well, and you know. can have you ever grown them from seed? Apparently, you can grow them from seed. Mm -hmm. I grew some from seed last year, um, and they flowered first year. But the thing with the seed ones, unless you're saving it from like your big fancy tubers, they're pretty like just small garden varieties. Um, so I didn't, I, I wasn't too fussed about keeping them alive. <laughs> okay. Um, so I kind of let them fizzle out. But I, I have sown a few more from seed this year just to kind of see what what different colors we'll get because obviously they're, they're different every time aren't they right um, but yeah they're, they're super they're beautiful easy. so easy to they're grow absolutely easy beautiful to grow, easy to propagate they're just brilliant honestly okay well you <laughs> might have i i bought three from a garden center last year mm -hmm. and they were beautiful but they were really fussy oh really and maybe it was because i had them in pots yeah and not in the ground but I thought mm. these are, I mean, they were absolutely stunning. But what ones did you, what colors? What ones do you it know? Was, it was like a rusty orange with mm. gold around the edges of all <gasps> the leaves. Stop. I mean, I it was, that. it was a looker. Oh. But I thought you were a high maintenance looker. <laughs> <laughs> not what I think. Yeah, I'm like, ah, I don't know. So I didn't, I didn't take them out of the ground. I just left them mm. in their pots and I thought, yeah you know sink or swim we'll see what you do i think they're gonna sink because it was really cold yeah it's it's the wet more than anything they rot any ounce of you water them way too much they just rot they just rot away so okay. quickly now um, what do you see um as far as pollinators what do they attract um dahlias not it depends on what ones you get because a lot of them it won't show their centers until they're ready pretty much ready to die Right. Um, so you don't really get that many pollinators unless you get the big open face ones. So like the collarettes and the sort of single petaled. Plate, plate dahlias or the something. Dinner plate like ones. I think they, their, their centers are quite closed as well. Um, so I didn't really see many pollinators on the few that I had last year. Um, definitely not bees or butterflies, probably more like the, what would you call it? predatory um beneficial insects okay sort of like the, the wasps the wasps and stuff yeah, like okay. that rather than the actual bees so i don't know it's a weird one yeah anyone someone else is growing daily some seed as well and leave yeah, them in the ground are. only to yeah. grow six or seven from seed every year oh. wow that's a well, clever one actually yeah good job dave <laughs> Yeah. So yeah, I'm going to I'm going to see what happens with these and I'm going back to that same garden center this year. So they had so many dahlias and I just wasn't or dahlias. I guess it's dahlia. Oh, I switch between the two. I, I never know. know what's the right. Dahlia. <laughs> dahlia. Uh so I think I'm going to have to go and maybe dip my thought. dip my toe in a little further. Amazing. The thing oh. is, you can never just come out with one. If there's like a whole shopping center full of them, I'm coming out of at least 10. <laughs> well, and yet you just don't want just one. I always like mm -hmm. to buy things in threes or fives. Mm -hmm. So oh, I'm, like, I'm not, if I like it, I'm buying at least three of them. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Right. So, um, yeah, we'll, we'll see. So what else, what else are you growing though? I mean, that's like a big, okay. That's sorry. Big, I'm we haven't talked in so long. <laughs> so are you replacing asparagus with dahlias no i the asparagus lives another year it's okay. it's it's secured its place for another year um i am gonna let it live for for this year and then i'll think about depending on space and how many and how well grown flowers goes i'll think about whether it's worth taking it out and then doing it next year 
Um, but yeah, no, the asparagus stays. Okay. Now, did you use it all or did you like have a day where you put a sign out, everyone come harvest whatever asparagus you want? I literally left notes on people's I greenhouses to be like, I've got too much asparagus. I'm never going to eat it all. Please take some. <laughs> I don't know if they did, but it comes up every day. So there's a new one. It's oh, so you much. have to, once it's, once it's moving, you have to stick with it. Quick. Very yeah. Quick. Or they're already going to, to flop. I mean, they're going to yeah. turn into ferns if you don't. Yeah. And they're not as, they're a bit, I don't quite like take harvesting them when they get a bit open and they start. It's oh yeah. No, and then beetles get on them and I just, well, no particularly when you can be really fussy because you know you're going to get 10 tomorrow. Yeah, that's it. Well, right? I'm going to take, leave those ones. Don't need those. Yes. No, last year was our first year that we could completely harvest. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I can't eat this much asparagus. So is that from, did you have them from crowns? Do you mean, because you've planted them I, recently from crowns or seed? Is this like I, your first I year? I planted some from crowns and some from yeah. seed. Oh, so wow. this was the, last year was oh. the year where I knew everything had been in there at least two to three years. Oh, and, okay. oh my word, the amount of asparagus that we got. <laughs> you like, like, oh, no. I can't, I mean, I like it, but I'm like, this is a lot wow, of asparagus. Yeah. It's yeah. exciting though. The first time you like sort of get it all to um, come up for harvest, it's like, what do I do? Oh, well, it because quite it's, exciting. it's also the first uh, thing to harvest in the spring, really. Yeah, with the hungry gap. And yeah. yeah, I am finding it is a good crop. This is what I'm, I might be swayed. I might, I am slowly being swayed into maybe liking it. I'm not sure. <laughs> um, but yeah. Like it. I I put cheese on it. I put cheese on it to sort of hide the taste. Um, okay. And that's how I've been eating it. Okay, you should, well, I'm, I'm uh, actually working on some of my, getting some of my asparagus recipes up on my oh. website. Because I, I realized it. that's going to be here like in a minute. Soon. Yeah. Um, soon. And it's really good on pizza and it's really good in a tart. <gasps> a tart? Maybe. What sort of like um, Like a puff pastry on the bottom. Yes. Well, I've and... got really into like baking sourdough as well. So I do the sourdough pizza and the, all the my puff pastries, my short crust. So that would be perfect if I would be right there if you are <laughs> playing well, I have my tart on the website, but I need to go. Mm -hmm. I need to get the pizza up. I mean, you I'll can't live it. on tarts alone, right? I could try. Well, you could, but <laughs> your heart wouldn't <laughs> probably appreciate it. <laughs> yeah, they're so good. I could I could do that too, but mm -hmm. probably not my best. Okay. Um, yeah, so okay, so asparagus lives another year. Awesome. Yeah. So that lives another year, and then... I will be creating a new, so where my greenhouse is, I've got a little bit of like a no man's land um, where all the rogue raspberries sort of took over. So okay. I spent a day taking those down ages ago and um, it's just been covered with membrane since. So that's quite a decent size where I'm thinking of converting that into a mini cut flower field. I say oh. field, it's a very, it's a small space, but like um, in the format of no dig rows and a path, no dig row path, and then it will have um like uh structures either side to sort of put the netting on keep them from bowing out sure um so that sort of structure so i'm gonna do dahlias on there and then i'm thinking cosmos as well because that yeah. gets quite big so i'll have like it's a row so of dahlias pretty. and that yeah they're so pretty and frilly oh. and i just i can't wait so we'll I'm have growing, I'm growing the, the cupcake one yeah it looks I like mean, the cupcake liners yeah can't wait it's just so pretty everything well, about them is just... in the wind like Listen, no, I'm no so troubles. Excited. No, we have no <laughs> care in the world. They're We're beautiful. So <laughs> yes. And they're not high maintenance. They're not, are they? Pretty, but not a high maintenance pretty. I like that. That's it. Yeah. No, I like that. So any other varieties that you're exceptionally excited about? Oh, um, okay. Quite a few. So you Cosmos. You don't even have to be exceptionally excited. You can just be sort of excited. I'm excited for all of them. I know. So Cosmos, um, I don't know if you've seen the Apricotta. It's like a sort of pink, pinky orangey. Oh, God. To be oh. fair, I'll have to make sure that's right because I've got so many now. So maybe I won't describe the colors, but maybe if anyone's curious, go and have a look. But Apricot is a really good one. Then there's Lemon Apricot which are just mm. really nice. They just fade into a really nice color. Um, then there's, I never know how to say this, Xena and Xana. Yes, I'm growing that one too. Yeah. Beautiful. So I think that one with Xanos, I think they're meant to be coupled together, but they make a really nice pairing. 
Um, and then just a few sort of white ones. So like you said, the cupcakes, I've got in pink and white. Um, and then there's also it's one called seashells where yes. the petal kind of goes. I have that one too. Yeah. Yes. It's, they're just beautiful. So, it's weird how many, how they're able varieties. to do different varieties, but they're also yes. beautiful. And they're all, I just imagine them in different floral arrangements and bouquets and just think, it's just the texture and the structure they're going to add. It's just amazing. I'm just, yes. yeah, I'm excited. <laughs> well, you also need to grow some hairy balls for your, yes. um, for filler. Hair. Yes. Because that's, or that's a thriller in that the center. Thriller. But they make a beautiful bouquet. That's why I'm growing yeah. them. Okay. I Aside might from the potty them. mouth, ha, 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 hairy <laughs> balls, uh, they actually serve a purpose. Serve a purpose. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, what else are you growing then, Audrey? So we've so you've doing cosmos. Oh, any oh, zinnias? Oh, I got a new seed just today. Yes, from oh, sunflower. Oh, what are you Steve. saying? Yes, sunflower. Sure. Steve is a sunflower breeder. Oh wow! This is called. Okay. Whoop, here we go. This is called Van Gogh's Fantasy. Wow! And so he like has the bred these to look just like the Van Gogh flowers in the sunflower's vase. How? So that's amazing. I know. So I have three packets of these and we're going to go a little Van Gogh sunflower crazy this year because mm. they looked so, gorgeous. Will they be on Google? Will I be able to see these? Or are they well, yeah, exclusive? he has just like they came out, I think, two years ago. OK. And then last year sold out within like a minute. Wow. And I got yeah. on the list this year and I was like, no, I'm going to get some of those. Oh, amazing. So, yeah a sunflower breeder that's so cool i don't think we have much i know a lot of people do the dahlia breeding and the zinnias just because they're easy but i've never heard of a sunflower breeder over here that's i think that's all he does wow, that's cool. and he does it i think he gives part to a, a non-profit that he's so, so i'm like go dude i love van gogh sunflowers so brilliant so idea that's i will keep you all posted on what those look like please uh, yeah, but <laughs> i was just thrilled to get a hold of some of the seeds um, and I think then I could save them and then they would just be different, weird Van mm. Gogh-y kind of seeds. So would they technically be sort of like an F1 or would it, they'd come true to, if you save the seed, would they come true to what they well, are? I think you they might come true to the mix. Wow. I don't think any of this is stabilized yet. And he just keeps mixing them and seeing what happens. Well, probably every year you get a different. I kind of like that better. That's more. You can almost have your own like special strain for yourself. I kind of, I kind of like the idea of that. Yeah. And you know, out of one sunflower, you're going to have more seeds than you're ever going to plant. Way too many. <laughs> Although these these centers look, they they look a little bit smaller than. Oh, I, you know, can I, you have to go backwards when you're on a camera. Mirrored. <laughs> uh, yeah, um, but they, they they don't look like they're huge centers. Mm -hmm. So I keep, you know, four of them. That would be. Brilliant. It's kind of fun to see what you come up with. Yeah. Oh, I love that. Them. So that one is, I'm very excited about that one. Mm -hmm. um, I love my zinnias and yeah. those have not been started yet because okay. it's a little too early. See, oh, I did to... start some, but I think maybe they'd be better to start now. <laughs> well, you so. have a much milder climate than I do. Yeah, so it's just wet at the get... moment. Yeah, you can get things out a whole lot sooner than I I can. Okay. Um, so, But I'll start those probably mid-April. Okay. Um, yeah, because they could be out mid-May. And I might just also direct sow some. They grow up so quick once it's warm out. They do, don't they? They um, just rock it off. And I just find those so nice for vase fillers mm -hmm. because they last long. They're, they've got a nice stem. They come in every color yeah. under the sun. Oh, don't they just? <laughs> That's and the problem. Pollinators love them. Mm -hmm. I mean, I even get um, hummingbirds on mine. Do you? Oh, you're so lucky. Yeah. Oh, and those things are so gorgeous. They're so small and so cute. Oh, oh, and I, I wish we have them. them. And they'll sit on like a cosmos mm -hmm. and it doesn't move. So oh I think, God. how much do you weigh? Like half an ounce? Probably. I mean, yeah. Yeah, they're so pretty. I um, really wish we had those. Oh, Joe's Growing Purple Prince. Love that one. Grow that so one every year. 
It's a nice, really um, tall, large, large bloomed uh, zinnia. Mm -hmm. And I also got some zinnias that are uh, more for the borders. So okay. they're, they're sure. short. And so I'm anxious to see that. Well, a bit like, yeah. I also am growing for the first time the egg plant, which is not an eggplant, not an aubergine, I should say. Yeah. It's an actual flower that oh, looks like the oh, yolk is in the center and the whites yes. are around it. I have seen that, yeah. Yeah, and it's supposed to be a really good pollinator. I have heard that good. also, yeah. Yeah, oh, that's so a good one. I'm going to try putting that as some edging uh, wherever it will work. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I just want to get as many kinds. Uh, right. You're going to have such a great garden in terms of pollinators this year. That, like, It's just going to be insane. I feel like we're going to have to go out with like bee netting on ourselves <laughs> so that they don't come after us as well as all the good stuff. You'd hope they'd be full and happy that they just kept to their own. <laughs> I know. And I leaned in a little bit this year to stock and yes. larkspur. Mm -hmm. uh, I just love their color. I love a gray flower. I yeah. know that sounds. It's almost just, like a mute tone, isn't it? It works. Oh, so and they're, well. they're kind of like an elegant looking. So I have gray, amazing gray, I think is what mm -hmm. it is. Poppy. Really? And I have a Earl gray larkspur. And I That'd thought, nice. oh, these would be so beautiful <laughs> together. So I'm also trying to think as I'm planting things. How they're going to combine. Yeah. Yeah, and I like I do. like like I do like a blast of color, mm -hmm. so I, I tend to grow purples together. Yes, but it's also then beautiful to throw purple and orange together. And as contrast as possible. Yeah, yeah. yeah I've yeah, definitely yeah. seen a trend this year, and it's a trend that I've a hundred percent fallen into. Um, but it's it's like the combination of like them tutti fruity colors, so like the really bright cerise pinks with like the baby yellows or the oranges and I'm just yeah. I really want to get a bouquet that looks like that this year because they just it looks so fun well I've been into the last couple of years hot pink mm -hmm. and hot orange together yeah that's it Edith. because I just think and I found a lantana last year <gasps> oh, I love that lantana. was hot pink yeah hot orange with yellow oh, all three yes See, I had a lantana yes last year, and it's the first time I've ever heard of this plant. And I, as soon as I saw it, I ordered it, and I actually think it was called Tutti Fruity. But it was the most beautiful, like cerise pink, yellow, and they're just really quite unique flowers, aren't they? The little trumpets, they're like yeah, a they're trumpet. they're very. And then when it it wouldn't rebloom for me, no, so when I, I, it yeah, like I put out seeds. Yeah, and I thought, okay, so you were good for half the summer. Mm -hmm. Um. So I don't know if I'm going to get those again, but the color combo. Beautiful. So I met one, just want to get one and then pick flowers, those colors to go together. Mm -hmm. It's um, so nice. It's something, it's really, it makes you happy. It's like a really happy yes. color combination. I really like it. Yes. Because before I kind of like the really romantic sort of bridal colors, so like the soft pinks, the, the creamies, and then like the apricots will mash together. But I'm like, no, I like the bold. I like the bold, happy yes. colors now. Um, so yeah, See, and I'm really going the other way. I always like the bolds, and now I ordered um, some zinnias that are like blush colored. Mm -hmm. and, but as I thought, those would look beautiful together too. So, so yeah, I'm going the other way. Um, I'd, I'd love to just have a field of like a full array rainbow array of rainbow colors that you could just choose from, no matter what mood you're in. That'd just be lovely. <laughs> Do you ever? Um, watch have you ever watched garden answer mm -mm. on youtube no oh wait no i have i have yeah she's insane like, yeah all, i think yeah. i mean the space she's got alone is just it's insane huge uh, um but i've I seen mean, her winter zones i've seen her greenhouses and her just everything oh yeah but she has a cutting garden mm -hmm. is hers like that I, I like professional flower farms don't have cutting gardens like this I mean, She's her, good. oh, and she does nothing small. Everything mm -hmm. is bigger and better. And, but, um, she's also sometimes a source for me just for some flower varieties yes. that I haven't known about. Yeah. Just uh, to see what's new as well. But the way they do things, um, is, is it's crazy. 
and it's so organized as well like she's her videos are always right on point for when you need to know what to sew and she's already done it and they're already looking green and lush and yeah well and they've been doing this i think for a lot of years mm -hmm. and it's their full-time jobs so yeah i think that and they have time. people they have people. that's true you that's know true. there's a whole different ball game right there uh let's see I'm just sorry, I've just seen Danny. Um, Danny keeping an eye on Locke there. <laughs> Hi, Danny. Each other welcome. Hi, Betty. Uh, wait a minute, wait. I, uh, I saw a great comment up here. Too much mm. flowers. What is that? <laughs> I agree. There is no such thing as too many flowers. Uh, oh, here was a question. I think there we go. Uh, any tips for germinating zinnias? Um, wow. Yeah, I mean, I have I have problems with zinnias. They're not. Do I love. Them. I like them, but they are. I find them really quite time consuming to grow. But I have found germinating them. They definitely like a bit of heat. Um, and then once they're germinated, I just whack them outside in my little mini grow house, like a little plastic thing. And they seem to do well in there. But they need a lot of light quick. Otherwise, they will just stretch to the sky. Oh, they will stretch um, to the sky, yeah. Yeah, so I think you have to be quite quick from germinating to sort of making sure they've got that light. Otherwise, you have to start again. That's what I've learned this year. <laughs> okay, maybe mine work well because I have them under lights when I... Yeah. If I yeah. sold them in the house. But I'm going to I'm going to do a lot more germinating of zinnias just outside. Mm -hmm. So I think we're going to have an early spring. OK. I mean, the weather next week is crazy oh, nice. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I think I just might try planting them outside. Yeah. Let's see how you go. Let's see. see how I it, they, once you start planting flowers mm -hmm. like pre and other than sowing them direct. Yeah. The tray space they take. Oh my god! Yeah, it's ridiculous. <laughs> I'm struggling. But you're not gonna, you're not gonna do a whole flat of 72 cabbage, right? No. But sometimes with plants, depending on, I would grow a flat of 72 zinnias in a heartbeat. Um, mm -hmm. You know, uh, so I don't know if there's any. I don't. I have never had a problem with the zinnias. I wish I could say mm -hmm. the same for snapdragons, but zinnias, and I think maybe my conditions are just right. Mm. so do uh, yours grow it well yours grow in the cold then because i've done a few winter sowings this year of zinnias and they're the only things that haven't come up yet it's not warm so enough thinking, for them to come up yeah yet. they don't yeah they don't like they like warm they're a warm weather flower for sure yeah. yeah uh and the first frost you get will take them out yeah yeah so they're definitely they're like a tomato i always put them right in the category of tomatoes like okay you know, so yeah, so maybe definitely heat to help germinate them then, and then keep them, yeah, and sort of warm. Aside from some of the brassicas, I feel like everything loves a little heat to get going. Mm -hmm. And obviously, there's some things that are like they will not germinate unless it's under sixty or whatever. But most things kind of like it. Yeah, like a little boost. So, yeah. Uh oh, interesting. I thought I I thought. That was the case because we had a person uh, whose name is Luz, and she was from Australia Jade. and said the same thing. Yeah, she. I think she said it to me. Um, yes, they like, were just like, "Oh, bro, because I told yeah. her I got some." Just like, no. There is. It's funny that you say um, yours went to seed because I think they make ours sterile here, so they can't. Um, oh well, they went so to the these. Plants. They looked like seed pots to me, but they just went mm. to these little balls. And they yeah, did re-sprout. And I thought, well, I'm sorry that I deadheaded all of you. <laughs> I just assumed, you know, cut off the dead stuff and new things will grow. It didn't want to do that. Yeah, I found so, the same. It's weird. Very strange. Yeah. So are you guys growing any special flowers this year to attract uh, pollinators? And I'm sure many of you have probably said that already, but I've had such an engaging conversation here with Sophie. I got to say, I haven't been really. Oh, I've uh, missed the chat. I'm trying to have a look now and again. I but. know. <laughs> it's kind of hard when you're chatting. 
Um, Robin hmm. found state fair of Zinnia grow huge heads. Okay. Wow. Not heard of that one. Well, and okay. remember when state fairs were, oh, remember the world's fair? Apparently that hmm. was a thing. World's fair? Well, before my time. We have, a sure. big, huge, we have a big, huge Goodyear tire on the side of our one of our expressways that used yeah. to be a Ferris wheel. What? At the, like one of the world fairs. And I was like, world? I just kept it. <laughs> well, they just put the tread on it. And now it's an advertisement for, but it's so funny. I love that. Uh, it's got character. We got Zinnia. Oh, name buddy, got I Zinnia. love Thethonia. Oh. Oh. Uh, beautiful and it's so it will just keep growing and growing mm -hmm. and growing uh very pretty let's see uh danny's growing your your plots by the way danny are looking really good oh, they uh, look so good. <laughs> dahlia's lupins uh, zinnia gazania which is a, also um stunning flower cosmos six for and fourth Oh, wait, I got, what, I'm going to say six varieties of nasturtiums, and then I saw the tulip count. Wow. I didn't think your plot was that big. I mean, it looks big, but That's insane. nice job. Love tulips. Oh, Andrew, this is, I, I, I'm growing three artichokes just for this reason, because I mm. think when they put those thistle-like flowers out, stunning. Are they the ones that almost look neon? They almost look like they're glowing, don't they? Like the they're big, very bright purple, and they're yeah. huge. And oh, oh and the cool. whole—I think artichokes just are an architectural plant. Mm -hmm. So it just seems oh, love it. So I'm hoping that that works this year. So I'm growing three just for that. That's brilliant. I'd oh. love to see someone grow those with the ornament ornamental cabbages underneath, or something like that. That would be such a great combination. I'd love to see that. Well, Speaking Drew. of which, I have <laughs> cabbages. Yes. Yeah. Please do it. That would be gorgeous. It'd be so nice, wouldn't it? Just like oh. a little round circle around a couple yeah. of them. I think, oh. I, I, can I steal that <laughs> idea? Oh, absolutely. Please. Okay, please. That, oh, that would be beautiful. Uh, oh, mm. the uh, Dusty Flats is saying... That the choke wasn't edible, so I let them flower. You got it. And honestly, I love artichokes, but I really love them when I can buy them in a jar where it's just <laughs> artichoke hearts and they're in a lo lovely olive oil brine. And I just have to open it and, you know, to process it. Because <laughs> cooking a fresh artichoke, it's a, it's a labor of love as far as Is I'm that? concerned. And oh. nobody in my house except me would like them. So that's a labor of love. I will just leave to the chefs uh, <laughs> of the world. Uh, oh, oh, yeah. No, artichoke flowers are stunning. Stunning, stunning, stunning. Mm. Oh, Lisa's mentioned California poppies. They are, oh. they're great. I do love a poppy. They're brilliant. And there was a little, I think Jesse said about the poppies when you cut them. Obviously, they go a bit floppy. Um, I did see a really good hack that if you do have any sort of cut flowers like that, you can get almost like a like a wooden skewer, the really thin ones, and you can put it in the neck, and it'll just keep it upright for a little while. Um, it'll oh. still drink water a little bit, um, but it'll just help it just stay upright, I guess. Um, so if you did really desperately want those in an arrangement, you can do that. I think it's the same for tulips. If you find tulips kind of flop over, you can do that. I've also seen like clear straws yeah. just go around them That's and it. you don't really notice them. Yeah. Uh, I try not to like to me, poppies, I just leave them outside because mm. they're so happy and they flow in the wind kind of like, um, was it the cosmos we were talking about? Yeah. It was yes. kind of, yeah. They're just so, so oh, I try to get it. I try to pick ones that have a little sturdier stem. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, when should poppy seeds be sown? Well, um, um, any, yeah. yeah, like now, anytime, mm -hmm. uh, poppies do like, like you can, you can actually, if you have snow, 
you can sprinkle them on the snow and they'll just melt into the ground. Um, I have some, I have some outside in my winter sewing and I think they're doing okay. Uh, but we shall see. That's the mystery of winter sewing. We'll wait till we open up yeah. everything. Is that, are those the bread, the bread seed poppies? Are those ones you said you're doing? I love those. Yeah. Cause I good. like them for their pod almost more mm -hmm. than, cause they're, those to me are beautiful in a vase by themselves. Mm -hmm. Let them dry and they're of so. Of course, beautiful. they last for ages dry, don't they? Yes. Oh, I forgot about that. Well, yeah. Yeah. Like all winter, and then you can just add greenery in there, whatever you want. But oh, yeah, I love brilliant. those. Yeah. Oh, good. Oh, that's a good um, tip. Danny's got a tip here. Uh, drop a copper penny in the vase too. Oh. It works up cut flowers. That's interesting. That is. I, I need to know why. why. What is the science? What is the scientific reason for this now? <laughs> why? Here's what I feel like. Some of these, I don't care if it's an old wives' tale. If it works, mm, it works. If it's That's a placebo it. for the plants, and they think, "Oh, awesome!" Obviously, it must have something to do with the mm. copper. Well, copper does so much, so I can't. I can completely imagine it probably will help. Um, yeah, that's, I don't. Yeah, that's sure, I'm not sure if our pennies are made out of copper anymore. I don't remember the last time I've seen a penny, if I'm honest, <laughs> since COVID. Well, well I don't, yes, I, everything is by a card now. Yeah. Yeah. But I, I think, did we still have, maybe we must. I don't know. Uh, oh, wait. Um, oh. oh, you got worried that they were getting too much water mm. or they might start growing more. Uh, I'm I'm seed. hoping might get more water, for sure. Uh, mm -hmm. Thank you, Robin. She's saying new pennies are not copper. I didn't think so. Uh, okay. Because okay. I thought that's gonna cost maybe more than the pennies actually were. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, uh, any any tips? I'm gonna ask you this, mm -hmm. Soph, because this is not a problem I have. Uh, any tips on stopping slugs munching oh, my lupin seed? They love lupins. I think other than hostas, uh, that might be like the next best thing that they love to eat. Um, do I have any? <sighs> Honestly, I think it was, was it Emma's allotment diaries did a really funny video. It might have been last year where she had a slug or a snail that had infiltrated her polytunnel. So she thought, do you know what? Whilst you're here, I'm going to see... Um, what what will you actually do? Like what lengths will you go do to get to my vegetables? Which I think she did the copper ring. She did the coffee grounds. She did the eggshells, I think, as well. And it went over all of them. It went over all of them. It will do absolutely everything to get to <laughs> that plant. And I truly believe, I don't think there is anything to stop them. If they want something enough, they probably will try. So I, don't, I haven't got anything other than maybe slug pellets. Do they, uh, if you put them up on a pole... Like if you put them up really, but then you couldn't see them, yeah. right? I don't know. Can't they? Yeah, because they can't climb. They're not meant to be able to climb very well, are they? Um, slugs. I would so think not... they have a. They probably have a limit to how high they can climb. Yeah, the slimy they, little. They have like a really there. pedestals everywhere of your lupins on. <laughs> oh <my laughs> Special um, lupin vessels. One thing I have done, and I don't know whether I it's I would have no evidence to sort of have this as a fact, but I have got some wool, um, some sheep's wool that I get in my dog, my like frozen dog food packages just to keep, um, obviously, it, stop it from thawing out. And I put that at the very bottom and the surrounding of my outside mini um, gr plastic greenhouse. And so far, nothing has been in and eaten it. So I'm not sure if they just don't like the feeling of it or they get dried out by the time they're actually able to get inside. But that's kind of stopped any sort of snails and slugs so far. But again, oh. I don't have exact evidence to say that is that is what's stopping them, but that's the only thing I've done different. Um, okay, well, I like um, Jace's comment mm -hmm. on how he'd handle it. He always kind of cuts straight <laughs> to the chase. <laughs> I believe, wait, wait, there so we go. I can see. A torch? And scissors. <laughs> Brilliant. Oh, scissors. Oh, no. Well, then we're going to cutting them straight in half. Two slugs? 
See, I'm not, I'm not, based on what you guys all say, I'm like, I'm not above, did these things actually die? Oh, I don't know. I know my dad used to, use used to say when he was um, younger, he'd put salt on them and he could swear that they used to scream. And I'm like, that's, that's not nice. <laughs> but kind of salt, salt, apparently. Well, I would think most like things like that wouldn't like salt on them. Mm. Oh, should yeah, shrivel up, don't conservative. I think it kills a whole lot of stuff. Mm. Uh, Rob is growing petunias, marigolds, geraniums, begonias, wow. and busy Lizzie. You see, I've not heard of those in I, ages. I have. Oh, I've never heard of those. No, I think Are that's they... a UK plant. I think it might be. I think that's a very UK term for them. I'm not is if that's a common name. Um, oh, this is interesting. Sorry. So, what are they? Impatience it grows lilies. Slugs and snails love them. Really. Oh, so that would be kind of like a sacrificial plant. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I didn't know that. But then they never, I feel like they never go to sacrificial plants. They know which plants you really, really like and you really, really want. And they go, I'm going to have that one every time. Because they obviously probably really like it too. Yeah. And yeah. But they don't want to share. At least we share. They go, no, we're going to have all of it. Yeah, it's, it's like, like, no, we're going to give, go, I'm going to go, go to Bug Ben and deal with that stuff. <laughs> so, because the, okay, the wildflowers that I got are all pink and yes. hot pink and all hot orange. Oh my God. I'm, I'm thinking good. that would look so pretty around Parliament, wouldn't it? Absolutely. And Parliament Please send a photo be, when it's all Parliament's, up. Oh, I absolutely will. Yeah. I'll do a video on that one because that's very special. Oh. It'll have uh, Steve's bug band sign uh, oh, put on it. Um, so good. Yeah. Wow. We're we're at uh, an hour. Oh my god, we are. That went <laughs> we're super so fast. Uh, and so good oh. to see all of you here. Uh, thank you so much for being here. And so. Mm -hmm. So good to speak with you. I know, same. It's been a long time. It has. Time. Can we do this again sometime? Oh, absolutely. absolutely. Okay. Yeah. I I, I know once the garden gets rolling, it's kind of hard to, but I'm like, but then it's really fun to talk about everything that's happening. Yes. I'll, I'll even, especially when it gets time to cutting flowers, we can do like a, let's do like a, bo a bouquet reveal or some a bouquet bouquet. Yeah, or reveal. we can do maybe a collab video with <laughs> what we're doing with our cut flowers. Yes. Oh, Absolutely. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Well, again, thank you so much. No, thank you for asking. I love it. Yeah. And again, all you thank you. Oh, we have a question. Robin, you got that right in under <laughs> the wire, Missy. Uh, I have three ginger shoots about 10 inches tall now. At what time? Uh, at what point do I pot up? Ooh. Okay. Well, I don't pot. Okay. If there's this is a longer answer than at what point do you pot up? 10 inches tall. Yeah, I mine are growing like weeds this year. You actually snap it off the gin, the piece of ginger, and then you pot it up directly. Because when you pop it off, the roots go with the plant. And you can leave the ginger in to see if it produces any more ginger. Oh, my God. So, yeah, it's um, – I do have a video on that. Um, I hope it's enough for you to see. If not, we'll, we'll chat later. Marjorie, oh my gosh, I was just thinking about Thanks. you going, I haven't seen Marjorie. Oh, so good to see you. Oh, oh busy there. Lizzie is an impatient over here. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, yeah, I just got some tango mix impatience going. That sounds is that sounds amazing already. Again, orange, pink, orange, have yeah. some purple, and some peach. And I'm That's like, wow. oh. But oh really, God, oh, it. Marjorie, so good to see you. Hope you're hope you're doing well. Oh, That's good. okay. Well, hey, we're gonna we're mm -hmm. gonna sign off next week. Uh, Robin is on next oh, week, okay. so look forward to that. And we'll have we'll gab just like this. Uh, Jace, thanks so much. I'm getting my scissors. Okay. <laughs> Brilliant. 
You're hilarious. Oh. Okay. All right, everybody. Have a great week. We'll see you next week. Same time. Bye. Later, guys. Bye-bye.